Hey everyone and welcome to Rebranding Rawcasts. In this first episode, we will be interviewing three ex colston pupils. They are about to share their honest opinions on their time at the school. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and keep supporting the movement. Question, how would you overall describe your time at Colston? So any like positive or negative thoughts that you have towards your time at school? School was a great time. Yeah, met as well. Yeah, it was good. It's great. Honestly, school gives you like that school especially. It gives you the best things in the, like in terms of like respect, discipline, all of that. But like in terms of what they teach you and some of the like the methods that they teach you is a bit a bit mad. Yeah, but, but yeah. some some of the things that we face from Colston's, or well, one thing I can say personally is understanding like society. And obviously, I may walk into a room at Colston's there's not many people of my kind of skin. So you're around a lot of white people. Growing up old and you go to businesses and you go to business ventures, you are surrounded by a lot of businessmen which are dominated white people. So as a black boy, I will not, I'm not scared of that situation. Mm. And at that time, I may look at going through Colson's at all, whatever, but now it's something I can definitely take and I use to my advantage in more ways than one. So. So overall positive. Yeah, listen, listen. Yeah. Uh, school, school. Yeah, the school is cool. Mm-hmm. So the facilities are like all there. Yeah. You know, the support's there. Mm-hmm. Mm. But not everyone can say the same. Like, you know, yeah. I don't know. Like, but for me, anyway, like the support was there that I needed. Um, it wasn't so much diverse, but like I know that's like changing in the lower years now. Um, but yeah, it was it was it wasn't bad, but. Obviously, it doesn't mean it wasn't without its faults and stuff like that. I mean, like, every school has their faults. Mm-hmm. Literally. So. You came from lower school as well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I started in year five. So yeah. I was there from year five to year 11. Yeah, that's right. And I bounced to my college. Yeah, college, man. I stayed for six months. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nah, I wouldn't yeah, stay for the six months minute, man. Especially after coming from year five. Like, even if I came from year seven, like, whatever year, I'm not gonna lie, I couldn't do that six form like. Yeah. Especially a small number of people. And yeah, it's definitely concentrated. Plus, you yeah. like with Black. George knows, isn't it? He has mm-hmm. 13, I was like, yeah, we do. Uh, yeah. Any reason why like, you wanted to leave? Or just like, just a new scenery? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I wasn't going to get into Colson's. I not yeah, I don't know. I had a lot of teachers that I disagreed with. Question. Were you made to feel a minority at your time at Colston's? Is there any sort of experiences that stick out to any of you that you would like remember now to this day? I don't know if we were like, if I was made to feel a minority. We like yeah. literally were a minority in a sense, you know. Time, yeah. So, like, you naturally get that feeling of knowing you're the only, like, I think me, Aki, so there was probably like three so, black people in our year. The year above, there was Kian, Ryan, and that's it. There was, there was, was like two mixed race boys. The whole school, yeah. 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 the whole yeah. The whole yeah. you count on like two yeah. hands. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 When sixth yeah. form, I was the only black kid in the whole sixth form, year 13. Man. Yeah, that's, that's year 12, year 12 I lacked my time. Year 12, I lacked my time because I had Kian and Ryan. They left. And that, obviously, I love everyone that was in my year, but it was hard for me to walk in that common room and feel like I can relate to someone. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know I feel I mean? like you're not. In the year 13, I was George, 100%. I was there every day. I'd go to school by uh, by 11, I'd FaceTime in George, saying, George, I'm coming here. Uh-huh. I'd take the five to town, town to George, and go to George in a full suit. I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it, I couldn't. The teachers were jarring me, but yeah, grateful for it. But a minority, not as a sense. Only one little incident that I had in year 10, which is, which is when I feel like. I became aware of Colston School in the sense that I was sat in Spanish and a teacher asked me what is black in Spanish, obviously that's negro. I said that, I thought about it, it hurt me. Yeah. I think right now, I think, I remember taking it further at the school, dropping no names and it's a great school, but it didn't, nothing happened with it. The said person retired a few years after whenever like, she or he felt like it. Mm-hmm. So. For me personally, realising that, it made me think. And I told my dad about it. My dad started to tell me, look at the school you went to, right? blah, blah, blah. Then I, that's when I became aware of Colson's. Then the bigger picture of okay. Colson's was. But that was the only real time, never. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I was no angel at school. 
no age at all. So, of course, and even then, they still dealt with me accordingly, like they'll deal with George, I'll deal with Joe or, or Aiden or anyone else out of my head. So, yeah, but that was the only time I just thought, hmm. So you could have dealt with that situation a lot better, there was no... Listen, that's for yeah. anyone with a right mind to decide. Not necessarily, don't, don't sack, sack the person, no, anything, but just to dull it off so quickly. I don't think dismiss. Yeah, dismiss. And at the time, you can't say anything because, yeah, the reason why I was in that car's whole place was because I was naughty. So, mm. kind of cancel each other out, but at the same time, it's stick to it. Yeah, of course. You think yeah, about you it, think you think about, about that's, it, you think yeah, about yeah. it, and you've yeah. got a decent. I think when it comes to teacher like that, like that teacher's been there for so long, so much history around the school, like I don't know. Mm. They're gonna like put it to the side, they'll try to put it to the side to like not make a drama. Yeah. Mm. Nah, I personally I didn't experience like too much racism in the sense of Colston's, but I definitely see it. Like yeah. it was definitely there. I know it was in a lot of schools. Like most schools, all schools, I don't know any black person that's not experienced like racism, you know. So, um, yeah, I'd see it, but just because it's not directed to me doesn't mean I can't get like, offended no. by it or gonna step in and say thing, something. Yeah. So, that stuff happens, and it's not always like I know the person won't always speak up on like the, what's happened to them or the racism towards them because. Sometimes they feel like it won't get taken further, or it's just like a snide like comment, it's so not, it's not it's like, worth, um, yeah. worth like going out, but it still it's still have that same effect on the person in it. So mm. that is like teachers definitely need to be more like they need to educate themselves more about what can affect the pupil. Um, the time that I feel, or well, you can say as a minority at Colson's, you're reminded about your past or the school's past is for the place of life. For example, where the girls used to get changed, the dungeons. Like, and you look where dungeons are situated, and then if you look, I remember me and George were researching to Bishop's Palace. Bishop's Palace was built... 1706. Yeah, so which is a, which is a well, well before the um, end of the abolition of slavery, and then became a part of Colson's after the abolition of slavery. So when you do your homework and you look at the place, Bishop's Palace, you all walked in there. The dungeons lead to the kitchen, mm. which is where you may say a slave would come out of and work and the kitchen needed straight to the dining hall and they'll go back under to the dungeons. The dungeons now are the go changing this. At the time, I would never, I would be a liar to say that crossed my mind. But leaving and doing research and then putting the links, I'm not accusing courses of anything, but for what Bishop's Palace stands as when it was built and when the, certain histories, certain periods in history have gone on, it just makes you think. And then the fact that we still call it the dungeons, when I put all those correlations together, I go, mm. Mm. do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just that it, type of it thing. actually makes sense, isn't yeah. it? Do you know what I find interesting about like, the whole teacher thing, what the teacher said to you, it's like, it's just important that they educate themselves because if they can openly say that in front of a whole class, mm -hmm. All those kids are going to go, well, that's acceptable to say. Exactly. A lot of people look up to their teachers and older people. Mm -hmm. So I think if the teachers are giving off the right, you know, like, impression and saying the right things and doing the right things, then I think that, that will just go a long way. Yeah, in a sense that definitely. it starts, yeah. It starts with the yeah. Mm -hmm. Question is, was the history of Edward Colson ever taught to pupils actively? So do you think they have done enough as a school to teach about the past and its history. So were you aware of um, everything about Edward Coulson when you were at the school? My memory's not the best in it, mm. but, <laughs> but I don't remember, like obviously his name was mentioned. Yeah, cool. Although he, is, he made the school, or started it or found it, or I don't know exactly. It's like, it's not clear, the story is yeah. not clear. The story was never completely clear. And I've heard like more than one story um, I feel like the teachers don't completely explain what happened and the events no. that happened. Um, I know like a lot of the parents that sent their kids to school, like I know they would have known about like wanting to know what happened like in the past and stuff before sending their mm. kids to a school like that, you know, that still mm. like is connected to their previous identity yeah. like, and mm. hasn't really tried to detach mm. themselves from that at all. Mm. You know, it's like almost like they don't really mind and they know and it's not like they're not ashamed of it in any way and no, it's just yeah. kind of 
is, is what it is and just yeah. get over it kind of thing. It happens. Like, it happens. Yeah, it doesn't matter now. It's not the now. It's not the same. Yeah. No memory of anything sort of being talked to you about. What? I had a little bit of memory from like Mr. Drew, but the thing is with Mr. Drew, he was just like legend. Yeah, he just no, said no, it how it is, no. and like he was. And he, yeah. And I, I think I have a little memory of him, and also just from my dad. So it's like it's hard. It's hard for me to remember if they taught me about yeah, it because cool. I knew about it, but I just didn't. Mm. You don't like. You don't really think about it. Because you're going to assemblies, man. You're not trying to listen. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, I agree. This old man it's speaking cool. on the phone, chatting all this shit about so How did days like Charter Day make you feel at the time? And how does it make you feel now? But does anyone want to explain what Charter Day is first for anyone who doesn't know? <laughs> <laughs> Char no, basically, Charter Day, so it's got a few names on Bristol. Apparently, I think it's 13th of November. It's Colson's Day or Commemora Commemoration Day, which is celebrated by CGS. Colson's Girls' School, Colson's School, Colson's Primary School, and Bristol Cathedral. We'd all often go to Bristol Cathedral, and it's a half day for us, so obviously it's cool. We get to be dropped off in the middle of the town. So it's a, as a kid, it was a joyful day. Like, we, we began yeah. to switch on. Yeah, we got stones. Yeah, 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 the bus. Yeah, yeah. So, so we gas. Yeah, so we'd go, we'd carry on, and, and you'd go. Afterwards. Yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> Make it a move. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 100%. Go to Bristol Cathedral and you'd basically from 9.30 to I think about 12.30 we'd be in there singing hymns. It's all very traditional and patriotic. You would take the old school school buses, the old school that has the old school London buses that you go from the back and from the front and you'd all go in your houses. Dolphin, which is uh, Edward Coulson's is crest and symbol and emblem, which I was in, Dolphin House, best house though. Um, <laughs> Owenton House. Uh, King's House and Roundway, and you all take your separate buses, you know, you'd be, and you go and you'd sing and sing his favourite hymns and honour him in a sense and listen to scriptures and listen to Bible passages that certain kids from the school would read. So at the end of it, you get that Colson's bun. So that is Charter Day. We're in Charter Day. I personally cannot remember, don't get me wrong, I'm half asleep for most of this. Um, I can't really remember anything being said about Edward Colson's in the sense of who he was. How the money came about. The merchant ventures were often spoken about. And yeah, nothing really touched on about their impact or how their impact came about to Bristol, personally. That's what Charlie yeah. was really. I mean, I understand the day. Like, at the end of the day, merchant ventures and all of those people, they brought a lot of capitalist ventures to the UK and expanded right. the UK in crazy ways. And obviously, it's horrible what they did. And I understand remembering them, but it's the fact that they just don't teach the history of the bad stuff that got them to that position. Mm -hmm. Like, you can remember them, but you don't have to remember them in such a good light that you're honouring them. Mm -hmm. You can remember them and be like, okay, they did this benefit, they benefited uh, children and etc. Cetera, et cetera. They put their money into that, but then they also did this, and this is how they got the money. Mm -hmm. So it's like seeing history properly instead of seeing history as just celebrating him, having those days like, oh, because he helped all of these orphans, blah, blah, blah. blah. So like, you can't you can't just play it from how they have it now is they play it from one side. You can't have that anymore because at the end of the day, everyone saw that statue get taken down. Everyone now knows the history. Everyone's gonna see that and everyone's gonna be like, how can you do this? So. Yeah. Yeah. Charter day for me, like I, the day itself, obviously we all enjoyed it, half day and all of that, but. I don't see how the school can like put so much time and effort and dedicating their time to celebrating this guy and this day and all of that stuff that's not really like, yeah, it's relevant to the pupils, but the way you're teaching it and the way you're, whatever you're saying is just like, it's no relevance to us. We don't, we want to know like what happened and like why this school's even here, but not just because of Colson, because of the slaves and how it's built and like, like when you think of things like um, black history and stuff like that, that's just not represented or taught in the school or anything. And you can do a whole big half day and take hire out these buses and all of that stuff to celebrate this guy, this slave trader. It's like your priorities are just twisted in it. Like his priorities are massive. You can keep trying day, but turn it into Black History Month and then uh, I'm happy. Like yeah. it needs some fair representation, yeah. and a day like that is. Perfect. Like you got a day already, just switch it. Yeah, it's yeah. true. 
It's true. Or like, like you said that to me one time, like have that, instead of chart a day, chart a week, and have the whole time they're at school, and them learning about this, like yeah. how he benefited from the slave trade, and the oh, Atlantic yeah. trade, and all of that stuff. So when they go to these charter days and they see this stuff, or like, oh, he did this, they understand both the history sides. behind it, and they both understand sides. both sides. That's why, that's why I feel like everyone's so angry, like, mm. you have like the EDL law, you have uh, Pan-Africanists, or anything, it's the fact that you don't understand both sides of the party. Mm. You can understand, yes, okay, you would like, whatever, Edward Coles has exploited all these people. Okay, yes, that happened, we can accept that, but how did he do it, why did he do it? We don't know that, you're never told that. Mm. You're never told how or why, you're just told he has all this money. And he put all this money and he made this great school, be grateful. Like, it's yeah. not, if, if, if as a child you're in year seven and you hear that, your perspective of black people or slavery is a lot more understanding and a lot more, then you begin to understand the bigger pictures of life, the economical effects of why black people may grow up in certain areas and why white people may grow up in certain areas, then the white privilege, deal with these things, you get to, you get to, at, at an early stage, you get to like, a better understanding of it. But, you're just, it's completely abandoned in most, like, most of the curriculum mm -hmm. around the UK. Mm -hmm. Completely, like, it's just not a thing. Like, it's just not a thing. Yeah, not even just your school back in just the country, like, mine either. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You just learn the greatness of the British yeah. Empire. Yeah. Well, yeah. And the fact. Yeah.